What's up guys, my name is Ace, and something that a lot of people have started to notice with many of the guns in a game, typically while playing around in the firing range, is that it seems some guns are dealing more or less damage depending on the fire mode that they're in. So in semi-auto, for instance, they might notice it's taking fewer shots to kill compared to full auto mode with that same gun and all of the same attachments. And while this is something I discovered and shared really early on with the life cycle of this game with the battle rifles, all of them get a very noticeable increase to their damage when you switch into semi-auto compared to full auto. It turns out this doesn't just apply to the battle rifles and there's several other guns in the game that this does apply to. And I went through and tested every single gun in the game and found all of the ones that have a different damage profile in semi-auto versus full auto. So let's first go over the list of these before I go into each individual gun to share exactly how this changes the performance of the gun. But when it comes to the assault rifles, there's actually seven assault rifles that have a different damage profile in semi-auto mode compared to full auto, or in the case of the M16, burst. And these are the M4, the Castoff 762, the Lockman 556, the M16, the Castoff 74U, the Castoff 545, and the Chimera. Next, when it comes to the battle rifles, there's no surprise here. Every single one of them has a completely different damage profile in semi-auto versus full auto mode. And then finally, there's one LMG that has a different semi-auto damage profile. This is the Rap H. And these are the only guns in the game that have different damage profiles in full auto versus semi-auto. I tested every single other gun in the game. None of them have this effect like these ones. And now that we know that, let's go through each of these guns individually. I wanna share a range comparison, a rate of fire comparison, as well as a shots to kill, time to kill, and body multiplier comparison with every one of these guns on this list to see if it's worth using it in semi-auto versus full auto mode. Now I did try to condense this all into a single graphic for each of the guns. And if you guys wanna see more detail, I will leave a link down below to the spreadsheet I created that has the exact damage profiles in semi versus full auto for all of these guns. I just wanted to make sure for this video, I wasn't having way too much information on each of these individual screens. And let's just dive right into it. And we're gonna start it off with the M4. As we can see here, in semi-auto mode, our rate of fire drops to 541 rounds per minute. Of course, that's our rate of fire potential. You still have to be capable of hitting that fire rate cap with your trigger finger. And with this, you can see up close, it's still going to take the exact same number of shots to kill in any of the body multipliers. So nothing really changes there, aside from our time to kill becomes significantly slower now at 333 milliseconds due to that slower fire rate. In the second damage range, you'll notice we can now get a four shot kill to the body, whereas you can't in full auto, but you do have to be hitting that upper torso damage multiplier to make that happen. Also, it's worth noting, even if you do manage to get that four shot kill, you're still killing slower than a five shot kill in full auto, so there doesn't really seem to be much of a reason to be using this. And it's a similar story in the longest range as well. We can maintain a five shot kill with upper torso shots, whereas in full auto, it's gonna be a six shot kill anywhere in the body. However, we're killing faster with six shots than five when we're in full auto. So as a result, I would highly recommend staying away from the semi-auto mode on the M4. It's a really similar story with the Castoff 7.62. You can see our semi-auto fire rate is limited quite heavily at 343 rounds per minute. The body multiplier zones and number of shots to kill doesn't change at all in our maximum damage range or our medium damage range as well. Although we are killing much slower in those ranges in semi-auto. And the only real quote unquote benefits we see here are at the longer ranges. We can still maintain a three shot kill with upper torso shots at the longest ranges. And we still have a two shot kill potential to the head as well in those ranges. But once again, you're just straight up killing faster in full auto mode, even when it's taking you an extra bullet to kill. This similar trend continues with the Lockman 556. Technically with certain body multipliers in certain ranges, we can kill in fewer shots, but our time to kill is still gonna be slower with those fewer shots to kill. Then let's have a look at the M16, which does kind of break this pattern because instead of full auto, we have a burst mode. And with that burst mode, there's a burst delay. And if you aren't getting a one burst kill, your time to kill does jump up pretty considerably. And with this, we actually technically deal slightly less damage in semi-auto mode compared to burst mode. However, there's only two places where this really matters. First up, up close and personal, we no longer have a two shot headshot potential, whereas in burst mode we do. And then at the longest ranges, our four shot kill potential in burst mode applies to the entire torso, whereas in semi-auto mode, it only applies to the upper torso. Overall though, I do consider the M16 to be a bit of an exception here compared to the other assault rifles because even though we technically have a slower time to kill at 220 milliseconds for a three shot kill, 
For many people, they're just not getting those consistent one burst kills when using this in burst mode, and therefore it's usually taking them 332 milliseconds anyway to get that kill. And at that rate, if you're decent with semi-auto, you can get a more consistent time to kill at around 220 milliseconds, and it's just less punishing in this area because you don't have to wait for that burst delay for any missed shots. You just keep spamming that trigger and keep getting those rounds down range. And as a result, I think there's actually a decent argument for using the semi-auto mode on the M16 if you're really struggling with that burst mode or you just don't like burst guns or maybe you just really prefer semi-auto guns. As for the next one though, this is the Kostov 74U and this one gives you a laughably slow time to kill. At longer ranges, you're killing in 636 milliseconds, which is ridiculously slow. And even up close and personal with a three shot kill, even though it's a bit more forgiving because you can hit the entire torso instead of just the upper torso, that 318 millisecond time to kill is just not competitive at close ranges. So I'd highly recommend staying away from the semi-auto mode with this gun. And it's basically the same story with the Kassai 545. We get that really, really slow time to kill potential at 318 milliseconds up close and 636 at long ranges. However, there is one thing to mention with this, and that is we can get a two-shot kill to the head in semi-auto mode with this gun up close, whereas you can't do that in full auto mode. And more interestingly, you only need to land one bullet to the head and the other bullet can hit anywhere else in the body and you'll still get that two shot kill. And that will give us a time to kill potential of 159 milliseconds. So in that very specific situation where you're going for headshots and you're consistently hitting headshots, you actually do gain some benefit using the Cast 545 in semi-auto, but you're gonna be a lot less consistent and a lot less versatile when going for that compared to literally just shooting them in the body with a full auto gun. So I'm not saying it's completely useless to use this in semi-auto mode, it's just probably not your best all around bet. But then finally for the assault rifles on this list, we have the Chimera and you might notice this looks very different from the chart that I shared in the gun guide for this gun. And that's due to the fact that apparently behind the scenes they adjusted the semi-auto damage profile since I made that gun guide because I am very confident in my testing when I did do that testing. In either case, we have all the same damage drop-offs here. Technically up close, if we can hit those upper torso shots, we can get a three shot kill for a 220 millisecond time to kill, which is technically five milliseconds faster than full auto. But obviously with it being semi-auto, it's gonna be a lot more difficult than just spraying them with full auto. And that five millisecond change isn't really gonna be all that noticeable. Additionally, you do need to have a really, really good trigger finger in order to maintain that time to kill potential. And as a result, just like with most of the other assault rifles, I generally would recommend keeping this in full auto. You're just gonna have a lot more consistent success. So there we go, that's the assault rifles, and you probably saw a pretty consistent theme there. You generally wanna just keep them in full auto. Semi-auto is rarely gonna be beneficial, aside from maybe the M16. I'd say that's the one exception there. Now let's move on to the battle rifles, and these ones are very different when it comes to this because they get a very significant boost to their damages when you swap over to semi-auto modes, much more than the assault rifles. And I'm not gonna show all of the damage multiplier zones with this since I am covering that in much greater detail in my gun guides for the battle rifles. But with the Lockman 762, personally, I find this is much better in semi-auto modes because our two-shot kill potential extends out to 38 meters, and we get a ridiculously fast time to kill at 122 milliseconds. Additionally, in that first damage range from 0 to 18 meters, we do get a one-shot headshot potential, but only in semi-auto mode. We don't get that in full auto, and that's another huge reason to use this in semi-auto mode. As for the SO14, while we technically do get a slightly better time to kill potential in semi-auto compared to full auto, unlike the Lockman 762, we have no one-shot headshot potential in semi-auto, so that kind of sucks. And as a result, I just find this gun is just a little bit easier to use and more consistent when used in full auto mode, and that's my preference even though semi-auto is still very usable. It's a pretty similar story with the TAC V. Again, we can get a faster time to kill in semi-auto mode with those two shot kills. However, there's no one shot headshot potential. And I just find it's much easier to use this in full auto mode and you still get a great time to kill at 208 milliseconds. So generally speaking, I'm keeping this one in full auto as well. And then finally for the battle rifles, we have the FTAC Recon. And this one has a great time to kill potential in semi-auto at 120 milliseconds. Also, we once again have a one-shot headshot potential from zero to 18 meters, but only in semi-auto mode, so that's a huge benefit there. And as a result, well, you can use this just fine in full auto mode. I personally lean much more in the direction of semi-auto when using the FTAC Recon, especially for those one-shot headshots. 
And then finally for the guns on this list, we have the Rap H LMG. And with this one, it's kind of similar to the assault rifles in that you're almost always just better off in full auto mode. Technically, you get a bit of a damage boost. We have a three shot kill potential to the body up close, but that's only with upper torso shots. And that's still giving us a slower time to kill potential than a four shot kill in full auto. So I just don't really see any benefit to using this in semi-auto. And with that, that's finally gonna wrap it up for the breakdown of all of the guns that we currently have in the game that have a different damage profile in semi-auto versus full auto. And just as a general rule of thumb, you typically wanna be keeping things in full auto, with the exceptions being the battle rifles, and then there's also the M16 exception there. You may wanna use that in semi-auto. But when it comes to the battle rifles, honestly, it's pretty balanced and you could go either way with any of the guns. I shared my personal preferences with the Lockman 762 and the FTAC recon being in semi, whereas the other two, I like using them in full auto. But honestly, with any of those battle rifles, you can't go wrong either way. And with that, I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this weird behavior with semi-auto versus full auto and the fact that guns have literally a different damage profile depending on which fire mode you're in. Logically speaking, this doesn't really make any sense at all, but I do want to hear what you guys think down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.